Finance Presents, we're speaking with Cameron Diaz and Catherine Power, the co-founders of Aveline, a clean wine brand that launched in the middle of the pandemic. And we're so delighted to be joined by both of you today, ladies. Thank you. Thanks for having, Thanks for having us. Yes, of course. So let's talk about the incubation period. Uh, did you know that you were going to always launch in 2020? Give us sort of a roadmap, Catherine, let's start with you. Uh, of how this idea came to be. Yeah, it really started um, back in 2018, I think it was. And, you know, we were honestly just enjoying a glass of wine as we often did um, at Cameron's house. And, you know, we started talking about how everything in our life has gotten healthier. And we've traded, you know, our go to products in for, you know, better for you options, whether it was you know, groceries becoming organic, personal care becoming, you know, non-toxic, clean skin care, beauty. And we're sitting here drinking the wine and we thought, gosh, we drink a lot of wine. You know, I wonder if there's a way to make wine better for us. And what's actually in it? Is it just grapes as we'd always, you know, thought since we, you know, became of drinking age. And, you know, that really set us off on a journey really to learn about the winemaking process to see if there was a, you know, cleaner way to to consume wine. And, you know, once we, you know, sort of got some perspective on it, you know, we completely changed the way that we drank. We sought out, you know, wines made from organic grapes or that was, you know, that were min minimally intervened with. And um, then when, when we found cleaner wines and changed it in ourselves, you know, we just felt, you know, we felt better. We were doing something that was a little bit better for us. Um, and we felt very compelled to share, you know, what we had learned and also to share a, a solution to consumers just like us. Yeah, Cameron, I think that point Catherine just made about um, accessibility prevalence, it's not that this kind of wine didn't exist, right? You two were already consuming it. Why was that part of your vision? Why did you feel as though um, it had to be ubiquitous or, or you really wanted to flood the zone with Abilene? Well, what we found was that when we started drinking wine and you know, seeking it out, you know, we had to go across town to a niche wine shop that only sold wine that was clean wines um, and minimally intervened and organic. All the attributes that we were looking to consume for ourselves. Um, and when, because we live in Los Angeles, the mecca of wellness, you know, and we thought, wow, it's, this is the only place we can really go to identify the wine that we want to drink. We can't just go down the grocery store aisle. You know, we could, but out of the 500 bottles on the shelves, you know, maybe half of them are those wines, but there's just absolutely no way of telling. You know, Cameron, it's not a novel concept, right, for celebrities and people with huge platforms to be delving into, especially the liquor industry. Um, did you have any trepidation or hesitation going into it? Did you feel as though, okay, will my brand power, will my name really carry this brand? I'm curious how you thought that through. Yeah, Catherine and I spoke about that a lot because for me, I'm not an endorser. If you, you know, you can kind of look at my brand over the last 25 years and you, there's nowhere you can say that I've, you know, gotten behind another brand. My brand, I always, you know, promote my, my uh, products, which are my movies, you know, so I'm not really an endorser. So I've never jumped on, you know, another product. I, it felt right for me to be putting my name and energy behind a, a product that I was co-founding with Catherine. It was ours. We built it from the ground up. We knew nothing about the alcohol industry. I mean, like zero <laughs> about the alcohol industry. The two As of a us. Consumer, you did know. <laughs> I did. Yeah. You know, we we didn't know how the three tier system worked. We didn't know how. You know, we we didn't understand anything. Um, we kind of just we just started literally calling people and anybody who had a connection in the alcohol industry, whether it was wine or spirits, we would take it and call and sit down with them and ask them questions and put the piece piece of the puzzles together as we went and it was so much fun we were having we had such a great time but we always knew that Aveline was going to be 
a standalone product in the end. Like, yes, Catherine and I have large platforms. We have a lot of, you know, um, energy behind us. Um, and we have skill sets that we have to offer this, this brand and this product. But we know that eventually our goal is for Aveline to stand on its own where people are, will be pleasantly surprised to find out that I was a co-founder of the product and that I have anything to do with it at all. You know, we were always looking at Aveline as a, you know, that sh sh would exist without me someday. Yeah. Yeah. It's really a standalone brand that's really made for the community. Yeah. We really made this for our community. We made it for the consumer that, you know, again, you know, clean is not a, um, we didn't invent that category. We didn't, you know, create the guidelines for it. The consumer has. We know what those guidelines are because we are the consumer. Um, and so, being able to uh, participate in the clean aspect of bringing wine to the clean category um, or clean to this category has been really a lot of fun for us. You know, it's it hasn't been. Um, it's a no brainer for us. It's scary, I think, for the industry because it's something that they haven't addressed themselves. So it's kind of like we've launched ourselves into this really, again, not um, for specific purposes that I think are paying off for us because we know we know what our consumers want. You know, an area that both of you are very vocal about and passionate about are working mothers. And I think the pandemic has nearly exacerbated uh, the inequality, right, when it comes to people, especially female caretakers, uh, homemakers, uh, working mothers, I think the expression is, it's not working from home, it's living at work. Um, I'm curious, you know, Cameron, as you think about your decision to step away from Hollywood a couple years ago, now you have this bird's eye view, right, of what um, this so-called work-life balance could look like. What are some of the takeaways uh, from the pandemic as you sort of process how how mothers um, and their plight of working from home? You know, I think the hardest part, I'm very fortunate that I can, um, you know, work from home. I have a young, my, my you know, child is, is just over a year old, um, but it, it is really like working, living at work. You know, your, your whole uh, focus, it's hard to shift, you know, you go from, literally being in the kitchen covered, smeared, and you know, like totally focused on your child's needs to it, sitting in front of the camera trying to, you know, speak about a business that you, you put, you're pouring all of yourself into as well, you know, and I have it very minimally. I don't know. I'm Catherine blows my mind because she's got four companies that she's running all at the same time, you know, and she's been able to be at home with her son. But I, for me, I never had to work outside the home with a child. So I don't know really any different. I think that, um, and I, I, I've been lucky to have support and my child still takes a three hour nap in the middle of the day. So like I just like, get everything sorted. But I think, you know, Catherine really, you know, is the one who balances this, that aspect of like, especially now coming back into the home, I think having been a, worked outside away from your, you know, from your son, for so for the first couple of years now that you get to be home i'm sure the challenges are so much more but also a, such a great payoff because you get to be with them more yeah, yeah. Catherine, curious um you know as you juggle these four brands and we're looking at the light at the end of the tunnel right there is going to be a post-pandemic world how are you are you filled with anxiety excitement um what are you feeling i mean i think it's put this whole thing has put a lot of perspective um, you know, around what we do as people. And it's really created this, this contrast to look at, you know, work versus, you know, personal life and how to balance it. And I think ultimately, you know, what I've realized is that you, you really have to love what you do in order to be able to make it work. Otherwise you've probably realized throughout this experience that, you know, it's not worth it to pour yourself to go to great lengths to balance it. And so for me, I'm so lucky that I do love what I do. My career is so fulfilling to me and so exciting. And it's, you know, um, partly what, you know, gets me up and, and motivated every day. And that is what allows me to 
look at things and say, hey, I'm happy to work on balance because I love doing all of these things. And, you know, I waited till I was, you know, older in life, Cameron also did, so that we had the support system that we knew we needed in order to be successful at, you know, all the things that we wanted to do. So for me, my, you know, my support system is like, I couldn't do it without, you know, having a wonderful nanny and a partner who's super involved and, um, you know, all of the great executives that, that work for me. But yeah, I mean, the secret is really, it needs to be something that you love to do that fulfills you so that you're willing to make, you know, sacrifices. Yeah. And quickly, Cameron, I know you feel a lot of fulfillment as an entrepreneur, as an author. Do you miss making movies? Are you going to go back? <laughs> no, I, I, you know, it's a completely different, it, it, you can't, something I learned um, sort of early on from a friend of mine who was a producer and became a mother and she was, you know, producing huge films and, and I saw her kind of, you know, through her beginning of her career, really just thriving in that environment of just being a producer. And then when she got a family, uh, when her family started to evolve, I, I saw her go like, oh, wait, I only have 100%. You know, you only have 100%. We don't have 200%. We have 100%, right? So you've got to break up that 100% into, you know, what, how much are you going to give to your family? How much are you going to give to your career? And mm -hmm. I, I feel like for me, I know what my ratio is for uh, the balance of my life currently, because I already gave a hundred percent to my career as a film, you know, making films uh, as an actor and, and I did a hundred percent there. So it's just a different time in my life now. Now I am here and my, this is the most fulfilling thing that I've ever done in my life is have a family and build my, you know, ha be married and have, a, have uh, our, our little nucleus of a family. It's just completely the best thing. So I, I can't give, I know that I can't, I don't have what it takes to give making a movie what it needs to be made. I just don't, it, it, all of my energy is here. Yeah, and I know uh, Aveline actually is a baby name, right? So this is also your second <laughs> child in some ways. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Thank you so much uh, to Cameron Diaz and Catherine Power for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Thank Molly. you for having us. We to chat with you, appreciate it.